Ellen White very regularly utilized this verse in the context of teaching and learning. Why is God's supposed messenger butchering the Bible like this and utilizing the words of drunkards in Ephraim and then telling us this is how the Bible is to be taught? What's up YouTube? As always, welcome to the channel. So today I want to make a quick video looking at one of the Adventist Church's favorite proof texts regarding how they justify their method of terrible Bible interpretation. We have a term for this around here. It is called hopscotch exegesis. It involves jumping all over the Bible, ignoring the context of passages to weave together these sort of wild-eyed narratives. One of the key verses that they use to justify doing this is Isaiah 28, 10 through 13. So we're going to read verses 1 through 13 to see the context, and I want you to ask your yourself. Does this have anything to do with how to properly interpret the Bible, or is it giving us instruction on how to rightly handle the Word of God? Then we're going to play a small clip from Pastor Ted Wilson, followed by reading a couple of Ellen White quotes and see if their use of this passage is justified. So starting in verse 1 of Isaiah 28, it says, Ah, the proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley of those overcome with wine. Behold, the Lord has one who is mighty and strong, like a storm of hail, a destroying tempest, like a storm of mighty overflowing waters. He cast down to the earth with his hand. The proud crown of the drunkards of Ephraim will be trodden underfoot, and the fading flower of its glorious beauty, which is on the head of the rich valley, will be like a first ripe fig before the summer. When someone sees it, he swallows it as soon as it is in his hand. In that day, the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people and a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate. These also reel with wine and stagger with strong drink. The priest and the prophet reel with strong drink. They are swallowed by wine. They stagger with strong drink. They reel in vision. They stumble in giving judgment. For all tables are full of filthy vomit, with no space left. To whom will he teach knowledge? And to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk? Those taken from the breast? For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For by people of strange lips and with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to his people, to whom he has said, This is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose. Yet they would not hear. And the word of the Lord will be to them precept upon precept, Precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So did that sound like it had anything to do with how to properly interpret the Bible? Isaiah is bringing a message of God's judgment to a proud bunch of drunkards, including a priest and a prophet in Ephraim. Beginning in verse 9 are the words of these drunks who begin mocking Isaiah's message. In their mockery, they ask who exactly Isaiah is going to teach this knowledge to. Babies who were just weaned from the breast? They were mocking him. Not only that, but they were proud in their understanding and told Isaiah his message would be better fit for babies of little intelligence who need things explained to them at the rudimentary level. This is what the phrase line upon line, precept upon precept is referring to. But I want to play a short clip of SDA Worldwide Church President Ted Wilson from his annual council address in 2021. We've looked at this video before, by the way. But he begins this address by discussing biblical interpretation and the proper way to interpret the Bible. So let's listen in on how he utilizes line upon line, precept upon precept. Now, please understand, Seventh-day Adventists believe in the historical grammatical, the historical biblical approach, allowing the Bible to interpret itself, line upon line, precept upon precept, verse upon verse. So Ted associates this phrase with biblical interpretation methods. We'll look at where he's getting this from in a moment, but I want to clear the air on something real quick. The Adventist church definitely does not utilize the historical grammatical method of interpretation. The evidence of this is in the fact that if they did, they wouldn't be using Isaiah 28 in this way. The historical grammatical method of interpretation is when you take a passage and understand it the way that the original author intended and how the original hearer would have understood it. In an instance of sheer irony, while talking about the only approved method of biblical interpretation within the SDA church, Ted utilizes a different one to proof text the Isaiah 28 method that Ellen White promoted, thus putting their own interpretation on what the Bible says, a vicious cycle. But where is Ted getting this from? In Letters and Manuscripts, Volume 11, Manuscript 41b from 1896, Ellen White utilizes Isaiah 28 this way. 
Our time is precious. We have now but few, very few days of probation left in which to qualify ourselves for the future eternal life. We are not to devote these precious moments to forms and ceremonies. God designs that we shall keep the mind in pursuit of something tangible, something we can take with us into the higher grade. The minds of the youth need the word of God for instruction, that they may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The teacher will need to be very simple when teaching from the scriptures. They must be given line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Again, in Letters and Manuscripts, Volume 18, Letter 71 from 1903, she writes, The spiritual growth of many has been dwarfed. They have not brought forth in their lives the fruits of righteousness and peace and joy, but have been as the fruitless fig tree. If those who have received the light will appreciate and respect the testimonies of the Lord, they will see the religious life in a new light. They will be convicted. They will see the key that unlocks the mysteries that they have never understood. They will lay hold of the precious things that God has given them to profit with all and will be translated from the kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous light. The messages that have come to them will be to them as a voice speaking from heaven. The light will shine forth line upon line, precept upon precept, as represented by Isaiah in the words, Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Ellen White very regularly utilized this verse in the context of teaching and learning. Why is God's supposed messenger butchering the Bible like this and utilizing the words of drunkards in Ephraim and then telling us this is how the Bible is to be taught? Time and time again, this woman demonstrated that she lacked any ability to rightly handle the Word of God. So Adventists, stop using this verse to justify butchering up the Bible into tiny little pieces to weave together these wild-eyed theories. This is not how the Bible is to be interpreted and this passage has absolutely nothing to do with that. In due time, we will address more of the Adventist Church's favorite proof text. So if you like content like this, please be so kind as to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you can be notified when content like this is uploaded. With that said, as always, until next time, God bless.